Welcome back everyone to TNO, The Last of Europe. My host, Indonesian Mocha Lover. And right now, all the world for a bowl of bakso. Sitting, uh, sitting alone at a table in a busy square prison as the Cardinal finished his bowl of bakso. He swirled the broth around and considered the last solitary meatball. The crashing waves of people flying through the square manifested a haze of rhythmic footsteps and conversations. Sukarno gulped down the remainder of his lunch and watched the flushing, ru rushing flow of citizenry. The square's position in the city ensured a steady flow of foot traffic throughout the day. Stores, restaurants, and street vendors competed for the patronage of thousands of fleeting and material customers every day. Not all patrons were spectral, however. Sukarno made a habit of visiting the same restaurant every week or so and ordering a bowl of bakso. Nowhere else could he find a meal comparable in pleasurality. A pleasurability. Sukarno looked at the now empty bowl. It could potentially be his last. He received an offer from the conglomeration of several wealthy Japanese businessmen. They proposed a simple transaction, yen for a square. Through the complex alchemy of modern banking, loans, and flexible property rights, Sukarno could transmute a bowl of bakso into cash. A lot of cash. Sukarno looked at the restaurant, the old building that carried with it an uncountable number of empty bowls and filled bellies. The Japanese didn't care about history, however. It would certainly be bulldozed to make a way for more modernist establishment. Perhaps a few shops and an especially good bowl of bakso is a small price to pay for progress. Money sustains Indonesia, so we've been kind of mixed with the SKN. In which, uh, these guys, these guys, these guys, Japanese are so favorable, so bakso sustains the soul. Ooh, we did technically replace the SKN with our own people, so I like money. Dreams of birth. He lost his eye, all because there were no goggles to wear. He can't work as well with only half his sight, so he was fired soon after. Mr. Sicarno, I realize that you can't do anything for my husband, but I humbly ask you, for the safety of others like him, to require factories to provide the workers with protective eyewear. Sincerely, Melody. President Sicarno read the letter aloud in his office. General Suharto sat across from him, inspecting his fingernails. I think we can do something about this, said Sicarno. Hmm, said Suharto, looking up from his hand. I think we should do something, Sukarno repeated. I can make a statement today and have a law drafted and passed by the end of the week. Oh, scoffed Suharto. You're reading too many letters. It's not healthy. He gestured to the stack of unopened envelopes on Sukarno's desks. Everyone has issues and you can't fix them all. Stop agonizing over every minor problem in the country so we can focus on more important things. But it is important, counter Sukarno. Some companies may cra complain about it, but the cost will be minor. We can prevent a lot of ocular injuries. Suharto gave an exasperated sign shrug. Do whatever you want. Pass the law or don't. Read the letters or ignore them. I don't care. Just don't call me in here again to hear the latest heart-wrenching story that finds its way to your desk. I suppose you're right, SKN. The issues of the people are my responsibility. Uh, sure, we we did one side help them out, and the other side, we didn't help them out. So, currently we're finishing up rejuvenated shipyards. And then after that, it is February 1965, so... Ooh, military coup in the Kingdom of England. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, we shall see what happens, shall we? Nice. Budget booster done, and honor above all else. Looking at the sorry state of Indonesian armed forces just a few years prior. If I read this already, I'm going to read it again. The average soldier would not be wrong to assume that the modern Indonesian state was a decrepit, self-serving entity. When even those words, or even those would lay down their lives to the protection of their fellow countrymen, something has gone terribly wrong, and it falls to the president to fix it. And what did Sukarno do? What he always does, he builds. He started by building the nation himself, a daunting task for one man alone. It was then he may have lost his way, becoming more complacent with the corruption plaguing the army. As the papers would tell you, it's that's far from the truth. Sakarno was not lazy, and he did not sit idly by while the army twisted and contorted into an amalgamation of different of different generals looking for power. No, the president instead lured the traitors out from every level of Indonesian society and returned dignity to the army, navy, and the air force. Very nice. So yeah, I know I already read that one yesterday because I remember screwing up on the word amalgamation. I cannot pronounce the words correctly. Apparently, Woo! wow. What are the chances that we both get a coup in Scotland as well as a coup in England? English Military Command, Montgomery, and Republic of Scotland. Well, at least they still have a focus tree. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we have a couple comments to go through. The one I really want to address, though, is like, so in our comments, we add in, like, some of the music mods for TNO. Like, there's the TNO Radio, as well as TNO Last Waltz of Europe. Uh, the reason I don't add it in is because I'm not sure if I can get copyright striked with that. You know, because it might use music from... You know, that is historically based and stuff like that. So, I don't use those mods just because I just don't know if I can get copyright strike and I get a video demonetized, which would not be very good for me just because money is scarce. But anyways, so that's why I don't use that use a mod at the time of this recording. I just don't know if they can get me demonetized or not or copyright strike really. But presidential decree number three twenty one out of nineteen sixty five. 
The forms of purchase are not enough to save Indonesia, and drastic action must be taken. The President Sukarno has drafted a new presidential decree, like the previous one. It will expand his powers, but to a far greater degree. Sukarno understands that his authority ultimately derives from the people and has arranged for his new executive powers to be put to a nationwide referendum. Sukarno isn't worried, however. He knows that the people will make the correct choice, even if they need a little assistance in doing so. Great, great, great. Treasure lens, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Anything else we can do here? Not really too much. This is pretty much all the same. So, after that, Party and Palembang. Campaign on Java. Let's do that one. The people of Java live in one of two environments, either living in the bustling city, making ends meet by selling goods, working in the shopping district, or picking or pickpocketing foolish foreigners. On the other hand, many live in the slums in the outskirts, living off the land or occasionally driving into town for the few goods they can afford. So Garner recognizes both situations as problematic. The urban population leans more to the liberal-leaning Masumi, while the rural support whoever Sukarno stands behind. Sukarno, in all his greatness, is not a legend, simply a man, a man willing to do whatever Indonesian commands of him. Traveling across the land, listening to the problems of the poor and urban, will show that they don't call him Bung for nothing. Cool. Ah, support weapons good, because I think I remember it's usually 1965 where things just fall apart, don't they? I think everything falls apart in 1965, but I could be wrong. Campaign in Java. This is going too far, Sukarno, even for you, hot to spot. The presidential office was empty, save for the two men in a heavy tension. The people will decide that, President Sukarno answered plainly. He was seated at his desk, but it seemed to tower over Hata. You're always advocating for more democracy. Now I offer a referendum, and all you do is complain. Hata seethed under his cool composure. I want elections for leaders, presidents, not dictators, he said, unsheathing each word from his mouth like a blade. If you give yourself even more power, you'll undermine everything we've worked for. Sukarno suddenly stood up, placed his hands on the desk, and leaned towards Hata until their faces were just inches apart. On the contrary, I will secure everything we have worked for. Hata flinched back, and Sukarno, satisfied by the reaction, picked up his hands and turned away. He gazed outside his office window and absentmindedly addressed Hata once more. Democracy has failed in Indonesia. I will not. When he turned around to hear his retort, Hata had already left. The decree passes. Ah, unanimously. Well, how about we go party, guys? As the date for the referendum grows closer and closer, Sukarno must prepare for the possibility that the referendum may fail, legitimately or otherwise. In this situation, some of his political enemies may smell blood in the water and attempt to seize power for themselves. While the referendum is on track to be a landslide, Sukarno wishes to cover all of his bases. In the city of Palembang, not only housing a major voting bloc, but some of the best scenery the nation has to offer, many of the leading generals and politicians would be thrilled to visit and rub shoulders, giving Sukarno the chance to ensure their backing. Oh boy, and it Pakistan becomes independent. Cool. Good job, Pakistan. Good job. And, yeah, anti-tank. That's not too bad. A beard demands release of Timor prisoners. A beard started to pester us over the bunch of men in shackles. Specifically, the captured Timor garrison. We'd love to hand them over, uh, <clears throat> but it would be better if we didn't. Sadly, we just can't say no and make that the end, of, end of matters. We're going to need an excuse. There are two ways we can go about this. The first is the classic. No straight answers. We'll delay the proceedings until Iberia gets disinterested and drops the renegotiations. Secondly, formerly prisoners of war are under Jap Japan's discretion. While we don't, don't usually follow that rule, we could definitely follow it here and refer the Iberians to the Japanese. That should get them off our backs at least for a while. Which strategy are we going to use to get our pressure off of us? Prisoners of Japanese jurisdiction. Pie in the sky. Simarang is at the rich city. Wolf flows in and out of its ports like a beating heart of the capital. The greatest excesses are followed by the worst destitution, however, as the night follows the day. With the arrival of President Sukarno, the poor unfortunates and fortunate poorers swarm the streets in a flood of poverty. The President rides in a blistering white automobile. His polish alone is worth more than the collective wages of the trailing crowd. He speaks to the people, sympathizes with their plights. Sukarno is a man who understands, and he assures them. It is regrettable that Indonesia is home to such terrible poverty. He knows, but unlike the real, unrealistic liberals and violent, bloodthirsty communists, he has a solution. The referendum explains. Ye vote yes, and change will come. The people are skeptical, cynical, and unconvinced, but bellies are empty and roofs are leaking, and life is hard. What other choice do they have? He's got my vote. Well, you will eat by and by. He's got my vote. Because what else are you going to vote for? Maybe the conservative Democrats? Maybe. We still get about 2.61 every day. My goodness, that's so much. Bus speeches on Sulawesi. Sukarno's forte was always public speaking. He was never afraid to belt out the message he was born to share. <clears throat> the desire for Indonesia ready and willing to stand up to threats, internal and international. Above all else, Sukarno's campaign was centered around his vision for the nation and asking for the people to grant him a powerful mandate to bring it to fruition. But how will the people know what they're voting for unless Sukarno tells them what he'd like to do? Visiting the larger cities of Sulawesi will be a challenge as so many prepare to pack into assembly halls and courtyards to hear what Sukarno has to offer. Although it may be difficult, Sukarno would never allow space to be a barrier between him and his people. Nice. Alright, let's come over here. Close that out. Do this. 
Cut and spend. Oh, I guess spend and cut. We're gonna party, 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 party. Because the last one we do is I do solemnly swear, so that's kind of cool. Silver tongue, golden words. It was a grand hotel. Electric bulbs blazed with metal fire, blinding the stars and averting gazes. Tall drinks and small morsels of food. Oh, look at that. Second South African War. Re reprehensible in taste, yet respectable in status. Danced around the rooms and courtyards on supposedly genuine silver platters. The party goer's attention, however, centered on the women, who literally danced and fulfilled a, a much different appetite. It was a grand party in a grand hotel for the grandest host. President Sicarno thundered through the crowds like a rolling storm. Laughter and cheers followed him like the thousands of gray shadows cast by infinite orange lights. The finest suit covered his body. The strongest drink rested in his hand. The most beautiful woman clung to his arm. Friends began already drawing some applause. I want to thank you all for attending this party. The applause continued, amplifying the president's voice rather than smothering it. But I also want to thank you for your support. Sicarno pivoted, transforming his tone from one of joviality to rugged seriousness. He's telling it like it is, with the unsaid um affirmation among the crowd. Without your support, he continued, Indonesia would not be the country it is today, and nor will it be the country it deserves to be tomorrow. A dinner warmth filled the audience. We will make Indonesia better, they beamed. Their light hearts were brighter than all the orange electric bulbs. So I implore you, President Sicardo concluded, support me in the upcoming referendum, and you will see with your own eyes the great future that lies before us. The enraptured raised their glasses, golden in the light, and toasted the president and his grand future. Can you really deliver this future? To Sicardo, to Indonesia. Nothing bad will ever come from this. I, I'm sure of it. I'm absolutely sure. So, we're having the speeches on Sulawesi, and South Africa is exploded once more. Let's go ahead and watch the results. Now, Sukarno and his cabinet returned to the presidential palace in Jakarta, having said all they could, promising all that was within boundaries, and decrying their opponents. Sukarno has been busy since the start of his campaign in public and behind closed doors. Sukarno's clique has made all the preparations for all outcomes, good and bad. All that is left for Sukarno to do now is a kick up his feet and watch as the votes trickle in. Wow, South Africa has really just fallen apart. My goodness. I would not want to live down there. Oof. Wow. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Yeah, eight. Wow. Um, how's Auckland doing? Yeah, they're doing okay. Letland's going to get destroyed by. I think it's Borman. I think Borman won. Yeah, Mr. Balding Borman. Oh no, Han Tutek, don't lose Burundi and Rwanda. You already lost Zimbabwe. Oh boy. The will of the nation. The air wallowed in the dust. Throbbing heat. Stagnant energy rippled, waiting to be unleashed. A mass of people baked in the sun's fiery gaze. The ground beneath them was scrapped their shoes and bare soles. In the center of the sea lay a platform of drift where four titans of Indonesia congregated. Hata Nasushian. Suharto, and of course, President Sukarno stood with pride, basking in the adulation of thousands. A single podium with a shiny metal microphone was waiting for them. Sukarno, followed by Nasushian, and Suharto, left on the divine device, lusting after the power of mass media. Fiery speeches followed gnashes. Gnashing tangents, anger, national and personal, boiled the people to a gaseous fervor. Indonesia will be strong, we are one and indivisible. Together, nothing is impossible. Finally, it was hot to stern. At the peak of the people's rage, the climax of hatred and arrogant pride. The inferno was snuffed out like a candle. Hot as cool tone and measured words sucked the air from the fire, depriving it of necessary oxygen. The crowd with nothing left to fuel their hate, dispersed, leaving the empty square empty and desolate as a deserted pyre. That was a mistake, Hata. Actually, I was fixing, you, fixing your mistake, Bung. Oh, that was a mistake, Hata. Seems like a guy... Who we might have to keep an eye on. Just saying. Just saying. So it is 65. I mean, we get no more extra research speed. Factory repair speed. You get more construction speed. Um, you get more output. So I'm going to go with this one. I'm not doing any of this stuff yet, which is probably a mistake. But we need more land auction too, but whatever. Cool. Watching the results, my friends. And then... I do solemnly swear, all the wing, whining and dining, all the time spent in far-flung villages, educating the people who had barely heard of Indonesia, let alone any referendum, all of it had paid off. Just as expected, Sukarno was a hero of Indonesia, the father of a nation still getting its footing. Throughout his reign, Indonesia has been pro seen prosperity unlike any other point in time, and has stabilized and nurtured one of the best functioning democracies in Asia. Sukarno's popularity has never been higher, even if his actions have raised some eyebrows. It seems that Sukarno has received the blank check he's asked of the people. It's only a matter of what issues he'd like to tackle first. Very nice. And we still can't build, but hey, as long as people vote us in, that's what matters, right? That's what matters. Look, don't worry about the GDP to deficit ratio or income, deficit to income ratio. Ooh! That does not look very good now, does it? <clears throat> then again, what are we doing with this? It's not like we're building, so... A nation in Jubilee. Mm, this coffee's pretty good, too. Hata is sold in eyes. Vacantly observed the TV before him. A beautiful young woman proudly displaying the landmark of the TVRI. 
flash a beautiful, genuine smile into the camera. With a resounding triumph, the mandate of Sukarno grows more substantial. According to the most recent statistics, more than 75% of the nation has thrown their weight behind Bon Karno. It seems the will of the president will march on unimpeded. While here on Java, the average man can hardly contain their excitement. The merry woman continued on, although Hatsa could barely make out a word as the room erupted into thunderous applause. Men shot up from their seats, slapping their hands against the backs of the compatriots in celebration. Amongst it all, Sukarno sat obviously more than content with the results, judging by the grin that extended from ear to ear. How to fight a stomach wage war with itself. The vice president gently bit his lip in consideration. Has it not been what he wanted? Unmistakably. The president meant well. He was doing what was best for the nation. Hato was more than confident that Sukarno, Bong, his friend, was an earnest man whose vision for the nation became a rallying point for all, coalescing into one simple phrase, Nasa Kom. Despite this, the victory lodged itself in the aging visionary's throats, depriving him of oxygen, preventing him from speaking out. Hato was considerably conscious of the situation. He had borne witness to the m many of the meetings in preparation for the referendum. Restricting access to polls, armed guards in the polling stations, it wasn't right. It was far from democracy. Abruptly, Hato found himself pulled back to reality when he felt a joss rough jostle against his shoulder. Hato looked up, and the grinning face of the president occupying his field of vision. Where's your excitement, Hato? We won! Hato's lips remained a straight line. It wasn't right, Bong. None of this is how it should be. Quickly rising from his seat, Hato brushed his way past the bewildered Sakaro and towards the exit. The referendum passes, and we should be celebrating together as friends and as you know, patriotic Indonesians. I love, look at this, this, this little symbol here, this emblem, insignia, it looks so good. It's so nice. That is so awesome. I should have put that on my thumbnail. Oh, that is so good. So good. But hey, you know, things are not too bad. We have equal rights for minorities. We have police for the security. We got some flag taxes, a civilian economy, which I might like going to war. Eh, war economy is not terrible. Actually, it doesn't, actually, war economy, I didn't realize this. Until you know, in war economy, you lose consumer goods. Civilian kind of helps you with building more civilian factories. Minus 50% military factories. Wow. You get more output here. You get daily pickle power. Total mobilization. Um, that's not terrible, actually. That's really not bad. Even though you lose a little political power. Mm, Check your pensions. No pollution. Controls. No pollution controls. It's cheaper to spend stuff. Um, good pollution. Strict pollution. Wow. Safety. Oh, we do have slavery here. Corvi slavery? What is that? Allowed slavery. Corvi slavery. I'm not sure what that is. Monthly poverty goes down. Okay, so what happens now? We have one, and to my good friend Sukarno, held a cigar between his fingers, absentmindedly toying with a premium product. It took a drag and gazed out of the window overlooking the ocean. Everyone needed a break now and then. Sukarno was no different. For as much as he enjoyed all the lucrative drinks, the foreign women, the party stretching into the early hours of the morning, Sukarno was still the president? No. He was greater than that. He was in Indonesia. <clears throat> I am Indonesia. He was a spirit of freshly united people that manifested to defend the archipelago from outside invaders. He swiveled a leather chair to his desk. Even spirits must do work. He flipped through the ocean of papers on his desk. Junk, junk, hmm, keep. Sakana organized the letters on his desk. Hatsu usually was the one to process the mail to important and not. Where was Hata? He had been in the morning briefing. Sukarno shrugged it off. He was probably just... What was that? Sukarno's attention was drawn away to the letter. His message cleared from the red ink from, on the front. To Sukarno, my good friend. Confused, Sukarno quickly tore open the envelope. The message inside was quick and concise. Bong, I fear you have wandered too deep into the forest of power and have lost your way. I have made my intentions clear from the beginning in Indonesia to challenge the petty monarchs and to stand far above the warlords of China. I have said for one thing, Bong, since day one to free Indonesia. But when I looked took up arms against the colonists to the battles in your office, I attempted to make peace to work with you because you are my friend, Sukarno. But I can no longer be blinded by friendship. I cannot take part in this government any longer. Effective immediately, I will no longer be fulfilling the role of my office. At the end of it all, a signature confirms Sukarno's worst fear. Hata had left. Get Hata on the phone now. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh, look at this. Oh, there's more after this. Okay, cool. See, he's a traitor. Hata's gone out the deep end. What started as a simple disagreement and spiraled out of control. At the best of the most trusted advisors, Suharto and Nasushin, Sukarno's become increasingly concerned with Hata's reaction. Resigning from his post, speaking of the failure of Sukarno, it was unnatural for his close friend to distance himself like this, but... Oops, my apologies. I accidentally clicked enter on that. <clears throat> Uh, but, more than unnatural, it was a threat to the stability of the nation. Sukarno wishes no ill will to Hata. These differences could be ironed out once he's brought back to the capital by Suharto. Many questions await Hata when he returns, but above all else, Sukarno wonders what he did to lose his best friend. We will find him. The National Address. Static, all-encompassing, and pervasive. Nowhere in the entire complex could one find a single moment of rest from the buzzing of the radio. Sukarno had insisted, or rather demanded, the PA system had been tuned to the frequency of 93.5, the station of the rebellion. Hata's ab abrupt betrayal obviously affected the president. The lavish party spilling over with women and booze, those were not his friends. The Japanese businessmen he rubbed shoulders with, all superficial. All it took was one person to be ripped from him to change his entire perception of life. To those yearning for free Indonesia, the simple phrase ripped Sukarno away from his thoughts. Hata's voice, as much as Sukarno was relieved to hear it, alarmed him. 
His message did not seem like the friendly reconciliation he expected. As I speak as I speak as someone who's seen the inner workings of the Sakarno government, a government that rose to power by using the people as stepping stones. Has Sakarno lifted you up? Has you have you enjoyed the amenities of the rest of the world? No, every rupiah uh, made is funneled back into the state, to the pocket of Sakarno. While you live in disease infected shacks, you dance with the very men who pillaged this country two decades back. So, Garner, would you believe that there exists only two options the continuation of the regime or the destruction of Indonesia as we know it? My friends, Indonesia, is, as we know it, deserves to die. This is not the nation promised to you, nor the one you deserve. I present an alternative, an opportunity to tear this nation down from the foundation and build a new one from its ashes. A free republic that is in the envy of Asia, not the stain. As quickly as he appeared, Hato was gone. So Karno was left with static once again. He stared into the radio, hoping to find the face of Hato, his friend. Only static. If Hato had harbored these feelings from the beginning, perhaps Suharto was not scheming. Maybe Hato was the enemy. So Karno refused to touch the dial. The static continued to reverberate out of the speakers. But he could not drown out the president's thoughts. This broadcast is a shame and a sham. Censor all redistribution. I have my coffee here too, but I thought we'd have civilian and military stuff done at the same time, so that's why I clicked on internet earlier. Taking center stage. Hato adjusted his song cock. The crowd before him was less than he was used to. Hato stood alongside Bung during many of his speeches. He felt the heat radiating from thousands of bodies as Sukarno spoke to the power of the Almighty One God. Late for the case for adjusting civilized humanity, plus the unity of Indonesia on a pedestal, pledged the citizenry leadership from a collective wisdom and assured the people that all would enjoy social equality from the state in reality. Ponscalia was nothing more than a wasted breath. Sukarno would fulfill none of those obligations. It was his folly. For all Sukarno believed him, the execution of his ideals left much to be desired. That's what he would set the, that's what would set them apart, the execution. Oppressed people of Indonesia, your presence here means something mon monumental. Today we show that Sukarno and the Jakarta clique do not hold full control over the people. You have come here for one simple reason, to see change brought to Indonesia. You may be surprised to learn that standing shoulder to shoulder with you, the left and the right are in attendance today. I point this out for a simple reason, you do not even notice. The factionalism that Sukarno decries is what he preaches to the people as well. What Indonesia needs is a democracy that responds to the will of the people solely, which means hearing all sides, not just Masyumi and Ulama. It is because so many have been shut out of the current government that myself and our allies from across the spectrum have come together to form a new one, one prepared to bring Indonesia on par with the modern world and not leaving us in the dust with the authoritarian stereotype of Asia. Hato grinned as, he, as the crowd erupted in an applause, but he felt the same pit open up in his stomach. There's really no turning back now. Waving to the people, Hato saw Indonesia for what it was. Not a man, not a general, not a president, but a coalition of different people coming together to live in harmony. The sight eased his fears, and all of this was worth fighting for. A rival government? Preposterous. Round up his friends. Locked down Jakarta. We'll probably do that one. What has happened? It seems like only moments ago, the larger concern to the government was if there would be enough booze in the party. Since then, how to betray not only Sukarno, but Indonesia itself by organizing a coup? Well, Sukarno's mandate was strong, perhaps. Uh... Whoa, oh, oh, my goodness. Perhaps he fudged the numbers a little too heavily. It seems that the referendum was not a perfect reflection of what the population really felt. Sukarno, the police, the government, and the people have no idea what has become of the state, cautiously holding the trigger, ready for someone to make their move. Before chaos spills into the streets, Sukarno will lock down the capital, hopefully cutting off any communications between rebels and brewing tensions. What the heck was that? Nasushin paced around the presidential office. Well, we'll let them get away with anything now. Is that what's happening? Sukarno followed the general as he went back and forth, his face a solid stone wall, showing no emotion. He made a fool of you, Sukarno. Publicly denouncing your government is not only an embarrassment, it's an opportunity to pass to Hato to pluck yet another influential figure from our camp. Is that what we've come to? So Harto stood in the corner of the room, observing the slight twitches in Sukarno's faces. Sukarno looked pathetic, no doubt about it. Splendid news to Suharto, but the old man was far from the edge. He'd need another push, Mr. President. The minister is correct, albeit aggressive in his message. I pro... Sukarno shot up a hand, demanding silence, much to the surprise of Harto. I couldn't care less... Uh, what you, Sukarno, gestured to the looker in the general, or you have to say. The power of this office comes from here. Sukarno jabbed a finger in his chest. Nowhere else, not your toy soldiers, not your little friends. I fought for this country, I built this country, gosh darn it. I'll be the one to destroy this country if I have to. Sukarno paired the, eyed the pair in his room and took a deep breath. He needs to be removed from his seat quietly. Mr. President, that's exactly what Hatawa. Sukarno slammed a fist on his desk. I do not care. I do not want... I won't hear from him ever again after tomorrow. Now get out of my office. Any opposition will wear off over time and tr trouble in paradise. The terrorists adorned... Uh, Indonesia for its scenery, the calming waters, the breathtaking jungles, the hundreds of species unique to the islands. It was enough for even the most patriotic Americans to swallow their pride just to get a little tan. Sukarno felt everything but calm. He felt angry, he felt rage, but above all, the president was tired. Tired of opening letters, tired of the meetings stretching until the morning. How he yearned to be back in Pal Palembang, to be back in the good graces of the people. But Sukarno wasn't in Palembang, he was vacantly staring at the mayor of Jakarta. Sukarno watched from his chair as the mayor rattled off the typical script how the prosper prosperity of the city steamed from the drive to put Indonesia on the map, questioning where it would be if it weren't for the principles enshrined in the Charter of Jakarta. Something caught his attention, something unapproved, what said by the mayor. 
What we owe little to is the Sakarno government. The unfinished statement drew a collective gasp from the crowd and re reanimated the apathetic Sakarno. A government mismanagement and waste, one of repression and subversion. The crowd turned the puzzled gaze of Sakarno. No, this is not going to slide. Not at a time like this. Sakarno casually stood up and signed into the trembling official, placing a hand on his back. There we have it. It seems to me that the opposition is getting weaker with the slanders. Sakarno chuckled, smiling to the confused audience. I'm curious how. I'm curious to know how I've caused any suffering. I've presented of under unheard of growth. Not just economically. We've grown as people as well, have we not? I remember a time when the only opposition to the government, Sukarno turned to the mayor, was quickly disposed of. The people have spoken, they speak for Sukarno. Nice. Yeah, we definitely got a lockdown in Jakarta. Things are getting not very good right here, right now. Oh boy, I wonder what's going to happen. The escalation. Hato rarely made public appearances anymore, so Harto's goons had wised up to his patterns, and now that he was an official enemy of the state, Hato took to more secretive measures. He practically spoke to the people exclusively by radio, orating from uh, inside shelters far from the government. This is a little hindrance movement. The people only needed to look outside the window to see how far Sukarno got them. This was an unusual occasion, however. Bung was acting erratic, making choices he would never dream of doing. There was no question where the mayor went. It was not up in the air whether or not it was democratic to break up the protests. The people were not blind. A, a, a matter of fact, a matter of fact, most of them have been ever so been so keenly aware of the failures of the government. As Hato prepared once again to speak before the nation, he knew the implications of what would happen c should push come to shove. Yeah, the iron was hot, and there's no better time to strike. Hato opened his mouth and spoke into the microphone, his message being broadcasted at a protest numbering the tens of thousands. Hato, safe from his room, spoke passionately of the future to come, for what Indonesia could be made into, for what would be left behind. His voice strained in the speeches, but was more was caught in the throat. It was doubt. The crowds of Karno pulled would humble president or prime minister the word around. Hato shook the negativity from his mind. It only meant he needed to work harder. Nothing worth fighting for was easy. While Hato accepted the necessity of conflict, those in the streets of Jakarta who stood face to face with the police felt their own doubts. They wanted something better, but this was the best way to achieve it? As the men shouted to stand down, one boy, barely 20, had decided that it was the only way. He took the grenade from his pocket and tossed it into the crowd of police. Gosh darn it, you have orders to fire. Oh boy. Arresting the traitor. <clears throat> He's lost it. No sushi and spat. We spent all the time and effort turning the entire nation upside down looking for criminals and terrorists. How foolish to assume our garden was free of snakes. Sukarno glanced Osu yeah, at the general. He's not a terrorist. He's your superior. Nasushin ripped the resignation letter from Sukarno's hands. Explain this then. Are we taking orders from detractors now? Because believe me, Mr. President, I'd be more than happy to oblige. The two men shared a tense gaze. Sukarno sized the man up and down before, a st before, before him stood a general. A popular one at that, but Nasushin was more than a general. He was an idea similar to Sukarno. One man was the spirit of a nation, the other was his body. For all of Sukarno's admirers, there was just as many who would be pleased to see him hang. Nasushin kept them in check. For all intents and purposes, the army occupied the office of the president. Sukarno stood up, his knuckles resting on his desk. Your actions are solely at the whim of this office. Sukarno gripped a pen in his hand and jabbed it into the chest of Nasushin. You see this? I'll tell you who to kill, when you do it, and how. I'll tell you how to deliver me the traitor, and you will. I'll tell you when to uh, crap and then when to wipe. You, do you comprehend me? You'll bring me hot to because I asked you to, not because you hold any power. Nasushin, Nasushin. Unsuccessfully attempted to stifle a small before turning on his heel and leaving the room. So kind of panted, it still hunched over the table. His eyes he felt eyes his eyes sting. What had he had done? Had to forgive me. Wow, he's pissing out everyone off. Cool, let's lock down Jakarta then. Action and reaction. Good news has come uh, had become increasingly rare in Indonesia. People were lucky to hear any news at all. As the government fell into conflict with itself, the censorship was the only thing that didn't discriminate. All news would come from the TVRI, which would be filtered up by Suharto before being, be being, blah, 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 before being presented to Sukarno for approval. In a nation teetering on the brink of collapse, what the people needed more than ever was not extremism, but just something simple, a sign that the government was still functioning. Sukarno was never one for the simple, preferring the more extravagant things in life. When he commissioned the Bung Karno Bridge, he demanded only the best and who produced the best goods in Asia? The Japanese. So the Fuji Heavy Industries Company was selected to commemorate the brilliant work of Sukarno. Unfortunately for the oblivious Sukarno, Fuji Heavy Industries had little experience when it came to bridge building, dragging on the project for years. Today, the proud construction workers look on as General Ahmad Yani prepared to officially open the bridge. Now, more than ever, we need peace. The general smiled softly to the cameras. That may be a surprise coming from a man of the military, but now more than ever, the people demand stability and stability that Bung Karno provides. As such, I declare this bridge. Bulls don't care for the lost words. They have no regard for that fear that all men have. Potentially, the lost message to Earth will be mundane and pointless. The flashes of the cameras and the screams of onlookers carried Yanni to the next life, far from the one the rebels stole from him. They've turned to violence, it seems, cupping up empty-handed. 
Suharto's pulled back on the accelerator, letting out a thunderous screech from the motorbike. It was a warning, no, it was a promise. Hato would return to the capital by the end of the day. If Suharto had, had his way, the old dude would hang. He had no intention of letting that idealistic dude cower back in the good graces of Sakarno, but that now wasn't the time for power moves, not when Sakarno was on edge. When the pack of Polari, armored vehicles finally arrived, the city had taken note of their arrival, he was as, as was intended. Hato made no effort to hide his location, operating straight out of childhood home. Why would they? Suharto hopped off his bike, leaving it lean against the fence. A police attached their gear and prepared the assault, but Suharto made move little. His job was to hold the radio and tell Sakarno that how he'd been the one to execute the will of the president. He casually retrieved a cigar from the deep pockets of his shirt, watching as a burly man approached the door and brought the battering ram to its knob, demolishing the entrance to Suharto's home turned headquarters. Suharto waited and waited. He took a drag and waited. He stared at the birds flying overhead, undisturbed, and waited. Surely there was something, some some sort of commotion? A struggle? How does firebrand idealism surely would not permit him to come peacefully? Suharto's anxiety built. As more time passed and no sound came from the house, Suharto was relieved to finally hear the boots on the stairs. Down came each one of his officers in a hat, his hat in his hands. We turned the whole place upside down, sir. The tea was warm. He just slipped out of our reach. Suharto felt his body tense. How had they failed? Suharto picked up the radio. He wasn't about to give Sukarno a reason to have him shot. Jakarta, this is Suharto. Well, they've let him get away. Oh boy, that is not good. One of his friends. Well, we'll probably get this one done eventually. Sue, the rabbit hole goes much deeper than Hato. Just Hato, during his time away from government, Hato made connections with some of the most wanted enemies of the state. The plot against the government has thickened. There's much left to unravel still. Questions abound. Who had Hato spoke to? How many officers had pledged loyalty to him? Were there traitors in Sukarno's own government? It is apparent that the only way he will get to the bottom of this is if Sukarno brings all suspects into custody. A united front. Enough was enough. Sukarno had enough with the manipulation. He was not some pawn in the game. Indonesia was not some pawn in their game. There was no game. Sukarno had ripped the board out from under the players. His grand project was not the playground for aspiring generals or conniving politicians. This is the nation of God, gosh darn it. And it was time his subordinates started acting like it. Sukarno briskly hustled through the corridors of the assembly. He had an he had an act of his own mind. Game over, Hata, you, your little adventure's over. The legislators skimmed over their act before them. While Sukarno oriated from the top of the podium, casting spells with his arms and chanting his message to his opponents, a tactic he had used to get him thus far. He showed up for Merdeka. He hearkened back to the days of du the Dutch. He spun a tale of fresh United Nation doomed to the fall back into the same unorganized squabbling tribes and kingdoms that had made them easy pickings for the imperialists. He bled the story of Indonesia out of every pore of his body, not only ooze unrivaled nationalism, but the acute observer could pick up on the desperation of his voice. As a colonel, as Indonesia, deflated before the representatives, having no more left to give, he mustered all that was left in him to one last cry, demanding the approval of the act before him. Sukarno's labored breathing was the only sound in the assembly, in the quiet. Sukarno met eyes with his enemies and friends, pleading for them to put nation above politics, although it seemed like they sat in silence for centuries. Eventually, it was time for a decision. Sukarno watched anxiously as part of the room rose in affirmation, the other in negation, and slim few abstaining. He couldn't tell from looking, but he was hopeful he had to be, for there was nothing left to do. Sukarno resolved to stay stoic as the results trickled in, but the writing was on the wall. Sukarno's silver tongue could not save him this time. If they want conflict at home, so be it. Oh, it just goes ahead and does this. The Civil War begins. Sukarno wasn't quite sure what the decision had led him to overlooking an angry mob from atop his balcony. There must have been at some point where Sir Sukarno had gone off track and continued to fumble his decisions. He thought of what Hata had said long ago as his resignation still in his breast pocket. You have wandered into the forest of power and lost your way. That was it, huh? All started when Sukarno overstepped his boundaries. Throughout the entire journey, he was afraid he wasn't going far enough, but here, here he was, watching from his office as people took up the arms against him. The Swedish and Suharto had already assembled their armies and barked orders into radios as outposts across the archipelago hunkered down for a siege. He looked out into his burning city and felt like he should have been coming to some grand realization. It felt like Sukarno should have learned something from it all, but no. Sukarno was more firm in his belief than ever. It was the politics of it all that had ripped him from his life of luxury. It was the ideology that would turn the streets red with blood. It was then Sukarno felt no more pity for Hata, the man who had stolen everything from him. There was no more justice, no, there was no more time for pity, only justice. Justice for Sukarno, just for the people. Okay. Okay, so we're still here. And we're still our focus group, which is nice. Free Indonesia, led by Mohammed Hatta. Oh, his name is Mohammed. Critical supply shortage, disorganized forces, as well as the Romusha issue. Does he have a focus tree? He does! But not for this campaign. We're good justice for Sakarno. Oh, Operation Phoenix. Oh, look at this. Nice. <clears throat> Operation Mo Mogok. Interesting. You know what? If there's enough support, you know what? Um, I'm gonna show you guys this anyways. I'm gonna make a save here, because maybe if there's enough support, maybe we'll play as Free Indonesia after this, too. Just to see that what their focus is like, because I don't know when the next time we have, well, that we will have to play as this nation. Oh my goodness, this is a mess. Oh boy. Oh my giddy aunt. Oh boy. Ah, let's do that. There you go.
I want all three of you to go. Well, hold on. You three go right there. There you go. And because it's such a gigantic mess, you can just go in there. Um, man, that sucks. That really sucks. Hope we've got enough journals for this. Uh, Mordani? Hello, thank you. Or whatever it's going to be like. That. Oh, wait, no. Oh, wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every time I look at Indonesia, I always think we're blue just because I do free Indonesia so much. So. <clears throat> and we can take their capital. That'd be great. So we are this color. So. <clears throat> All right. That'll be good. And I'm glad we have it paused because we definitely need a pause. Oh, boy. <clears throat> We're definitely going to be running out of generals here. Oh, boy. If we can get to right here, that'd be really, really good. I'm going to send three of you guys here. I'm going to send you guys here so we can circle these divisions to destroy them. Um, you guys just kind of hang out there. You guys just kind of... Oh, you're going to get killed, aren't you? Yeah, oh boy, that's this is so many. Holy crud. <clears throat> this is really not good. This is really, really, really not good. Um well, we have these guys over here too. I did put like all our soldiers are stationed around here just so that we could uh actually you guys are there. Uh like have soldiers on every victory point. That's really what my goal was, so yeah. Alright, so let time go on. Just a little bit. Oh, we got soldiers down here too, huh? Kill them off. Kill these guys off first. That's the most important thing to do. There you go. We should have those guys. We might not be able to win there. Um, they're attacking us. We're attacking them. Uh, what's happening down here? What? Hmm. Do they have invisible... They might have invisible divisions. Oh, you might actually be able to win now because of that. Oh, this is a mess. Where's the capital? It's still up there, right? So, win here, win here. Make sure all the stuff is going to be okay. Oh, this is a giant mess. Oh, Operation Mokok. Uh, how many guns do we have? We need more fuel. Hmm. Dub. Operation Mokok. Masakarno and his closest military allies. The plan calls for a swift operation to secure the islands to the north of Jakarta, Borneo. The bulk of Hata's support base resides on the island, and the war will never come to a close while the island stays in rebel hands. Well, the plan was drafted in a joint effort between the Sakarno, Suharto, and Nasushin, who would be leading the operation left, was left initially vague. Securing the island means cutting the head off of Hata's rebellion right away, and wh whoever accomplishes the daunting task will surely receive a large boost in prestige and many fine promotions in the future. Sakar himself will undertake the operation, but his presence is needed back in the capital. It's between General Suharto and Nasushin to decide the fate of the Borneo campaign. I like the green, but we could use more of it. Um, this is not good here. Can you guys, like, beat these guys up here and just move out and get to here, maybe? Yes, you might be able to do that, actually, which would be great, great, great. You guys keep on moving in. Do the best job you can. And circle and destroy if you can. Uh, get rid of these guys first. That would be good. Um, you guys go over there if you can. That would be good. Defend. Win. Defend. Get over there. I would love, be able to really love if we could take that group here. Because I don't know why they spawned there, but whatever. Um, could you guys all go... Actually, you guys go right here. You guys beat these guys up too? You might be able to. Huh. You can't move. Interesting. Weird. But all right, head in there if you can. Head in, head in, head in, head in. Because after this, we're gonna have to. Oh, oh, okay, soldiers down here too, huh? Nice. Uh, let's take a look. Because we will have to fight American divisions. They eventually, we'll have you know guys showing up, which is gonna really, really suck for us. But whatever. Good. You guys got there down there. Good. Go there too. Oh, look at that. Free military factories. Good. Guns. Um, can we get some military spending, maybe? Yeah, that'd probably be good to do next. Let's grab some trade. Finally, we're at war. Finally, 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 finally. Nope. We got nothing. We got nothing. Which is gonna really, really suck. If you guys could just help out here, like, that'd be really nice. Um, go in there if you guys can. That'd be really good. Oh, you can take the capital now. Most definitely. Good. Ah, we got him circled. Good. All right, let's go ahead and finish these guys off up here. 
We're going to move in a little bit more. Go all the way down there. Do that. You guys go down there, maybe. And you guys actually help out down here because there are soldiers still trapped down here. Alright, not bad. I'm, I'm ignoring this place, I know. Oh, actually, that's a capital, huh? That's not good. Keep up the pressure. Hey, we took it nice. Get down there if you can, cut these guys off. Yeah, I don't like fighting multi-front wars, but it's fine. Whatever. Oh, we need a field marshal. Duh. Saharto, um, Nasushin. E oh, so, oh, he's got level 5 attack. Holy crud. You guys... I could use more commanders. Oh, boy. There you go. Nasushin, you can be a general. Come on, guys. Let's finish this stuff up. There you go. Help him out. Help him out. God dang, supplies suck down here. Operation Mo Mocha. Sarto in control. Nasushin. See me in my office. Um, rather the forces. That's not bad. Sakano speaks. With the arrival of war once more to the quiet, peaceful archipelago, it's more important than ever that the people remind, remember who stood up for them since the beginning, who have committed their entire lives to the survival of not only the millions of people under its protection, but the very concept of Indonesia. TV, radio, and public meetings all give the people hope. But not only that, it provides them with the reassurance that everything will be alright in the end. There will be that there is a co competent administration in place to ensure the return of stability. The battle for Indonesia is not just a battle for who can shoot the fastest. Drop the most bombs or show the most islands, but it's a battle between personalities, between the bombastic and firebrand leader who can speak out the other, or outspeak the other. Sukarno is a natural speaker, and Hata cannot compare. Nice. Come on, get over here, we get supplies. You just kind of hang out there and attract a lot of attention. That's good. Alright, boys, keep going in. Go all the way and kill these sons of guns off. Good, good, good. You guys get all the way down here, and then we gotta move you back up north. Alright, that's good. <clears throat> I'll probably go with Strategic Theorem. So, nice. Hold for now. This is actually a little dangerous for where we're at right now. Um, I'm gonna actually place you guys down here then. There you go. Get in there if you can. Get in there. That'd be great. We have no supplies here. Um. Get over there so we can get at least a port. Which would be nice. Uh, what are we making? Oh, that's fine. That part doesn't really matter too much. Come on, keep going. Keep going, guys. Kill these sons of guns off because we need to shift these soldiers around. Sakano's speech to the public. Sakano was in his element. He could control a crowd like God, control the wind and the rain. To some, Sakano was a god, but it was becoming clear that his fellowship was dwindling. The sloth began to weed out the true believers and the snakes in the garden. <clears throat> And Sukarno could not be happier. Although the people had taken up arms against him, he'd seen the hope he inspired in the people, and it was enough to shrug off the doubt that swirled in his mind. Sukarno was famous for his speeches. He had an impeccable ability to rouse the apathetic to his cause, not with threats of violence or with ideology and silver from brainwashing, Sukarno was someone to talk to. He was Bung Cardinal after all. <clears throat> He hadn't made a war speech in 20 years. He had grown accustomed to speeches for businessmen. Speeches where he inspired laughter, not bloodless, but at a time like this, he could laughter be found anywhere. The capital put under lockdown, and the Merdeka Palace converted to a military base. This was the threshold. The final test for the Indonesian people, and the results rested on their shoulders alone. The best Sukarno could do was to take a little weight off with a rousing message. His advisors urged him to broadcast from the radio, but Sukarno wasn't a coward. He didn't fear the Dutch, he did not cower from the Japanese, he would not hide from his own people. Sukarno grinned to his followers, You have seen what we've built. How lucky you are to be Indonesian. How lucky you are to be prosperous. Do you know what the riders are, my friends? Do you know what the writers are, my friends? Jealous. Just that we have rejected their petty attempts to divide us into the camps. How do we call you a liberal and you a fascist? Do you know what I see when I look out into the crowd? I see one people. I see an iron will that cannot be defeated by imperialism. I see a family ready to help each other in a moment's notice. I can. I see what cannot be defeated in Indonesia. Mad Deca. And we shall do the wall cabinet. Zakano knows what's best. This has been known for years but now, but yet, in a democratic system, an advisory board of the president's closest confidence... A confidant serve underneath him to guide him towards leading the nation, leading the nation to greatness. A civilian government is not properly equipped to deal with the outbreak of war, even if some generals occupy the seats in government. A completely war sentenced cabinet will be best equipped to tackle the issue of hottest rebellion. Students do not know war. Economists cannot manipulate the markets into winning a battle, and foreign ministers cannot negotiate with Hata in submission. The people demand action. It is time for the government to do deliver. Sukarno has lived his whole life in battle, and he is properly equipped with not only the experience but also the resolve to bring Hata to justice and return the way things were. 
Merdeka. Oh, right. So it's still January 1966. And are these guys moving? Oh, that's not good. Do they move? Um, can they move up here? Uh, where are they going? Uh, they might want to move in there, but they can't. Which is totally okay with us. We're still trying to finish these guys off down here. And some of these guys are just going to be sacrificial lambs. It is what it is, buddy. Whatever. You guys go and clean up all this area here. And we actually made it over here, which is really, really nice. Nice, 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 nice. And you guys are just hanging out over there, which is fine. Um, how's this looking? Oh, oh boy. What are you guys doing? Uh, why are you guys doing that? I don't. I don't remember asking you to do that. Can you get to the capital? That'd be really good. You actually might have gotten defeated. That's why we're probably going that way. Um, come on, let's go, 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 go. And we got him. Nice. Good job, guys. Good job. Let's come over here. Finish these guys off down here. Kill them all off. Have a good old time. You four. Let's get on up to here. All the way over there. You go right there first, and then go right there. That'd be nice. And you two, well, just kind of hang out and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. They do a port, which is not good for us. But whatever. I wonder if you guys could just beat these guys up. Take the airbase. I don't think we have airplanes, so that's fine. Good. And you guys did a great job, too. Um, Actually, if that's the case, I'm going to throw you guys right here, then. Right? Yeah. Throw them right there. Go, 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 go. Do not let them get over... Okay, we got that. Good. That's good. Good. good, 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 good. Alright, so it's, we're doing pretty well. We're going to lose these divisions up here, but, you know, it is what it is. You know. Help these guys out if you can. Take that. Take that. Meet up over here as well. Oh, so Conrad points the War Cabinet. So after leaning over the pile and cabinet, the portfolios in each member of the assembly came to great use once again. That was a matter of who, who was Team Scarno and Team Hotto, or on the occasion of some who was still alive and who wasn't. <laughs> so Arto had selected only the most malleable, excuse me, malleable politicians, those who could use for later, presented and presented their files to Scarno. Here are our best shots, Scarno. Frankly, we weren't left with much, but those still around us are the cream of the crop. Sukarno flipped through the files, only half reading them. Too wild, Sukarno tossed one aside. He met with a PKI back in the 40s. I remember him vividly. Without a care, Sukarno had massed a pile of discarded potential cabinet members. Only three of the men you have presented to me meet my standards. I'm disappointed, to say the least. Sukarno shrugged his shoulders. We are starved for options, Sukarno. These are the best men we have at the time when we have files on. Sukarno raised an eyebrow. What about those we don't have dirt on? Sukarno scoffed, Mr. President. You wouldn't suggest that we invite unvetted actors into the cabinet? The colonel shook his head. Not only do I suggest it, I demand it. What will you ever, what you will never understand, Suharto, is a connection between myself and the people. This is a war of the people, and we will only win if the people stand with us. So the colonel rose from his seat and looked out of the window. The little else will make themselves known. It is only your task to bring them here. Dismiss. Political maneuvering to save Indonesia? So be it. Suspend the assembly. So the colonel instates conscription to your draft. Uh, we don't really need that. Let's do Operation Phoenix. It's something you have a little term brother against brother, yet that's exactly what Hot had forced upon the people of Indonesia. Upon the very people have made has made a sacred or scared oath to defend his last dying breath. Had we had it our way, Indonesia would have continued down the path of success and prosperity. Everything seems so perfect, only to be ripped away by the opportunistic friend turned snake. Juno Suharto had not just drafted a plan. He has meticulously planned out the demands and the demise for the breakaway republic to the smallest and most insignificant detail. Okay, we're not winning. Just go and hang out. We don't want to lose too much here. So, uh, you guys, kill these guys off. You should be able to do that pretty easily. And yeah, there we go. And actually, get over there, and you guys go down there, and then you guys go over there and take these guys out. That'd be good. That'd be really, really good. Go up there. We can still save that division if we really wanted to. So, and I know I should be looking at Russia a little bit. Hey, look at you guys did it. Nice job, guys. Let's go. Vroom, vroom. Vroom, 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 vroom. Uh, take you guys. Can you go over there? Oh, yeah, you can. There you go. Nice. Hey, we actually have a little bit of fuel. Look at that. I remember getting that, but that's okay with us. Come on. Cells busted in North Sumatra. After a swift military operation, forces have secured small, several rebel safe houses and compounds in northern Sumatra. F small fire fights broke out between the military and the insurgents when the former attempted to escape, resulting in several casualties before they were pacified. We recovered weapons and plans indicating that the rebels were planning to launch an Insurgency within our territory. Their apparent goal was to draw our attention and weaken our presence on the front. It seemed that all the preparations was for not, however, as most of not all the cells no longer exist. Further resistance in the near future, at least, is not expected. With the main center's operations destroyed, the rest of the rebels have scattered, leaving North Sumatra firmly under our thumbs. Oh, this is Sumatra up here. Okay, that's good. Sorry, I don't know my Indonesian geography that well. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Oh, look at that. They got guys here. Oh, we're going to beat these guys up then. Oh, that's going to be a pain in the butt. Oh, peace conference is in effect, and is it Russia? Yeah, it's probably Russia. Operation Phoenix. 
a blockade. So Garno is no idiot. He understands long ago that most conflicts were to come to Indonesia proper. Most of the fighting wouldn't take place in the cities or the jungles, but rather the oceans. Indonesia is a complex body. Its organs spread out and the nerves some wide and open. It only took a man to cut one of the arteries for the entire structure to collapse in on itself. Such as why Sakana prioritized a naval budget so many years ago, whether he would be fighting the Americans, Japanese, or even his own people. It had been clear for the longest time that the battle on the high seas would decide the fate of the nation. As such, if Sakana could utilize the navy to blockade the capital of Hot State, until the victory would be on the horizon. Because we get better consumer goods, and that's why I want to do that one. Nice. You guys go up there. Take everything you can from them. Good, good, good. Head on down here, too. Oh, we're doing okay. Um, Actually, let's go down here, too. That would be extremely important so we don't get encircled. Oh, wow. You guys are still... You guys are doing relatively good. How many people have we killed? 31,000 versus 177,000? Nice, nice, nice. Go, go, go. If we take Pont Pontianak, we should be good. The Grid Friday Agreement. Perhaps make it so compromised in this world, huh? Cool. And soon enough, they'll be attacking, and we'll join them in the attack as well. Nice. Oh, hey, we got over. Nice. Oh, these guys are starting to get encircled a little bit. That's good, good, good. Kill them off. Kill them off. Good. Balak Papan will be ours. Comes to reunify Kazakhstan. Awesome, awesome. And we've won the Civil War. Look at that. Not too bad. Um, is that it? Prepare the Marines. That's this one. Guide the holdouts. Well, the original draft of Operation Phoenix X called for the quick encirclement of the capital via the blockade, a major military maneuver, and a thorough stabilization plan. Hotz has proven himself more than resilient and more than willing to continue this fight to the last man. We're just as adaptive to the rogue revolutionary. Our encirclement and blockade strategy sends a much more powerful message than simply occupying a rebel town. By starving them out, we can shift them away from Hotz and back into the loving arms of the president. After all, don't they remember the times that Sukarno kept the country safe? What has Hotz done for them but left their children dead and their villages burned? Nothing. They will surely realize this and come back crawling faster than one can say Merdeka. All right, do we get victory in the Civil War? Nice. So President Sukarno, the right floor of this victorious leader of the Indonesia, blankly stared across the waving, balancing field of people. They were cheering him, all of them. Sukarno didn't understand why. He was relieved, certainly, but not happy. How could he be happy? He looked at the papers in his hands, a speech written by General Suharto. The president wanted to deliver his own passion monologue to the adoring masses, but for some reason he did not have the resolve to refuse the general's request. Sukarno forced his head, creased in confusion. Since when did he do what Suharto told him to? He briefly glanced over at the man. Unlike the rest of Sukarno's entourage, he was smiling. He had a huge, positively ecstatic grin plastered over his fat face. He looked like a gambler who put everything on the black and walked away a millionaire. Sukarno tilted his head since when did Suharto smile? Next to him sat Defense Minister Nasushim. A grim weight pulled his mouth downwards into a distasteful frown. Sukarno mirrored the frown. He'd already seen the plans, the terrible, sharp diagrams and reports. The war was won, but resistance would certainly continue. Nasushin's job was to end that resistance as quickly as possible by any means necessary. Unfortunately for the rebels, Nasushin's definition of necessity was terrifyingly liberal. Sukarno turned back to the screaming, proud storm of people. For a few dozen minutes, he was President Sukarno, savior of India. Of Indonesia, not India, but Indonesia. The speech was grand. The tempo of inflammatory wit and adulation of the crowd moved back and forth in tandem. At the end, as he made his last blazing promises, he almost forgot he was a player on the stage. When he finished and the last chance had died down, he took a seat as another, less important official gave his own performance. He turned to Hata, his vice president and friend, to ask him how he did. Was it good? What did you think? He knew he could always count on him for his honest criticism and his pertinent advice. What? But Hato wasn't there. Hato was gone, ha had been gone for a long time. The backdrop fell away, the spotlight moved on, the curtains closed around Sukarno. As Roald reached its conclusion, the play was over. Our movement is contained within a larger one that carries us along as inexorably as wind and change of current. So, okay, this is going to be the end of it. So that does finish us up here, and then we actually lose our focus tree. So basically, we play until we win the Civil War, which is kind of interesting, kind of cool. So this is pretty much it. Um, Actually, that Civil War... It really wasn't that difficult, as much as, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, you know, fighting across different, basically different fronts and stuff like that. It really wasn't that bad. Didn't move these guys at all. I mean, free Indonesia actually might be more difficult than regular Indonesia. You don't start off that strong. Obviously, you, you're you not the government, so, um, yeah. Especially when they start down here, and they get, they're pretty much all literally encircled. You have to, whenever I try out the free Indonesia side, you have to get Surabaya pretty quickly to get, at least get some sort of supplies going through, but... That's going to be it for this part of the campaign. I might play as Free Ninja. We'll see if, there, if there's enough support for me to try it out. Let me know in the comments below. But regardless, if you enjoyed this campaign so far, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in a different video. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.